everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching today. So following on from yesterday's tutorial, I've made these gift bags, really nice size, haven't made this size before, and they fit the selection box that I made yesterday perfectly. So this is them here. You can just see as the side. You can kind of see it all there. I'm not going to open these up because these are actually all ready. I've put the tissue paper in. I just need to fill out the back of the gift um, tag there. But the I put everything together. They've got their gift cards in them as well. So that's the other one there as well, just so you can see. And I've used the papers that matched each one. So this is the Dovecraft selection box. has got the Dovecraft papers. This one is using the Magical Memories. And then this is the other one. So this is what I made yesterday for it. So for anybody coming into this tutorial, if you want to see how to make this, just uh, go up here <laughs> or just look back at yesterday's tutorial. You'll be able to find it on my page. So for that one, I'm using the Festive Folly papers. So I've got everything here ready to go. I'm going to just move that away actually so I don't get that much. So on its own, it's a really nice gift bag. You don't have to use it to put that in. So um, again, that's why I've kept the tutorial separate because it's always nice for you to just be able to go to one if that's all you need and not have to watch the whole thing. So for the gift tag, I use the Twas the Night tag from Woodware. And then for the large like sentiment on the front, I've used the Happy Christmas from the Big Christmas Words. I just always use that one. <laughs> I used it a lot last year as well. So I'm gonna go through the bits as we go to them rather than go through everything at the beginning. So to start off, it's a deconstructed gift bag in order for us to get that large size using our 12 by 12 and A4 papers. So you want two pieces of pattern paper that are nine by 12. And along the 12 inch side, if it's directional paper, okay, so there it is the right way up, you wanna then pop it on its side and then you're gonna score at six and a half. Okay, and do that on both pieces, fold it in half and it's that six and a half piece that becomes the base and that is the front, that's one of the sides. So again with this one here, so the, the larger size, you can see when they're folded in half, the larger size is the base and that one will stick over that one and you'll see there how we've got our front and back of it coming together. So that's those two pieces. Then you want to create your sides. So I've already cut one down, but you want two pieces that are seven and a half by eight, okay? And it's along the seven and a half side, you want to score at half an inch and seven inches. And then along the eight inch side, you want to score at three, okay? Do that on two pieces and then just fold and burnish those score lines. Okay, and then whilst I've got the scoreboard, these two pieces here are the large pieces for the handle. And these measure eight and a quarter, which is the default A4 width in the UK. And that is by nine inches. Okay, and along the eight and a quarter side, you want to score at four and one eighth of an inch. You can, if you want, do it at eight inches, you can do it at eight and a half. Okay, so if you're, you know, somewhere where you have eight and a half by 11 paper, you can do the eight and a half, just score halfway. So you'll be scoring at four and a quarter rather than four and one eighth. Do that on two pieces, okay, and fold and burnish. Okay, so that's all the scoring done. So with the side pieces, so the ones that you've scored at half an inch and seven, I've already done that one, but you wanna, along this shorter piece here, you want that facing you, you're gonna cut up these two score lines to this score line here, and then just remove that. Okay, cut a little wedge there, and cut a little wedge off of that as well. These will be our little tabs to fold in the sides. And then cut up that one, take a little wedge off, and again, just take a bit more off of that one there. Okay, so you will have two pieces like that. So we now want those two pieces and our pattern paper. So make sure you've got your right direction up and you're gonna be sticking all of this. So remember the large six and a half piece is the base, all right? So this here, this score line here needs to line up with this score line here. Don't worry that they don't reach the top, they're not supposed to. So you just wanna make sure that it runs nice and parallel with this, the fold there, but these score lines match up, okay? So I'm just gonna pop a little bit of glue on these tabs here. Okay, so I'm just gonna line up that score line and just stick that one down. Once it's grabbed, just flip it over 
and if you fold that one you can see that you've got it nice and straight and you'll have a little bit of wiggle room there just to move it like so and also do the bottom fold just fold it up and make sure that they run nicely together okay but that's what you should have there then grab another one of these and you're going to put glue along the other tab like so and you're going to stick it the opposite side so again exactly the same way so just lift it up underneath making sure your score lines all match up Okay, and then get your other piece of pattern paper, pop some glue along here. Again, make sure you've got the right direction, the largest six and a half piece should always be at the bottom. And then lay that one down on that. Okay, they all line up perfectly, then flip it over, bring over one of your sides and bring this one over. And just pop again some glue all on that tab. Lay that one down and pop that one over the top and they should line up perfectly. Okay, next you want to decide which you want to be your front and back. So I've got the, I'm just seeing where I've got my little reindeers there because that's going to be the base. That's actually quite nice. See how they are on that side. So you do see more on that one. It's actually the same but you do see they are pretty much the same. I'll just stick with this one. Okay, and then you want to, what we're going to do is I'm going to reinforce the base. So I've just got this here, which is just some of the card from the back of one of my 12 by 12 paper pads. But if you're putting something with a bit of weight to it, which this does because it has chocolate and stuff in it, then I've got this piece that I've cut to nine by six and a half. You may have to just shrink the sizes slightly, but I found it to be okay. But I'm going to use, now this is when I'm going to use my Kalau glue. And um, because I was, it's like, it's like a little layer of cement between the paper. So it does, you know, provide a lot of strength. So I'm just going to pop this all over the back of this, fold those out, and then I'm going to stick it onto this piece. Like so. And just flip it over there just so it's all stuck down. Okay. And then I'm going to pop some glue on one of the sides and I'm going to stick the side on there just kind of tack it there for a minute and then do the same on this side here and if you just flip it over for the minute and you just make sure that all sticks down these are great as well when you've got double sided paper because you get that really nice effect inside. So it all matches very nicely. And then I'm just now going to pop glue on the back of this one here. And then just make sure that's all stuck down. Yeah, got a really nice, you know gift bag coming together. Next you want these pieces, I'm going to leave that now. So I've got these pieces here. Okay, so these are the ones that we folded in half. So what you want to do is I've used the Card Making Magic, these are the A5 oval dies, and I used the one, two, three, four, five, six, so the fifth, sixth and seventh I've used from the smallest, from the centre. Um, the smallest one I used to die cut and stamp my little message there. And then it's the sixth and the seventh that I've stuck together like this to make the, actually no, because that's to make the rings. So you want just the, the sixth, I guess largest or smallest, however you want to look at it, is the one that I'm using to actually make the handle. So you want to lay it down with the the folded piece at the top, okay, because we're going to end up gluing it all together. And you just want to sit the oval, or square, doesn't have to be an oval, but I'm going to bring it so it's about, it's about half an inch from the top and make sure you've got it equal, you know, there. But I think that's about right. I'm just going to tape that down there. Okay, and then I'm going to run that through my die machine, so it's going to cut through both layers, so make sure you've got your sandwich right and metal shims and things like that. Okay, and then it should, yeah, mine's gone through, and that's with the Gemini, that's cut through both perfectly. And then use this one as a template 
for the next one just to make sure that you do get them in exactly the same place. So I've just sat that over the top. Oh, try not to draw on it. And just draw around that. So now I've got my oval there. And then all I need to do. So you just then want to make sure that you just line up the pencil line. And stick that inside there. And then just die cut that one. Okay, so that's those two. Keep all of these pieces, they're always handy for making little tags and things like that. Okay, so now I've got these pieces ready. We are going to stick them over this piece here that's this like half an inch piece that's higher. So it will go one side over this bit and one over the other. And you want it to just stick, you can just see there, just covering that half inch piece. So that's your guide. But it just extends the bag, everything matches. I just think it looks quite cool. And then I've got these decorative strips to just kind of break up that join, which we'll stick on in a minute. So all you want to do here is you want to stick glue onto one half of one piece and then just along the bottom of the other. Okay, and then just along there, cover half an inch. And then it doesn't matter which one you want to start on first. Which one is my front again? That's that one. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this one here. So just make sure you sandwich it. Keep it nice and straight. So with your other piece, you want to do the same and stick it on this side. Okay, so whilst that's drying, then I've got all these pieces. And to get these ones, I cut the larger one and that medium one. So it would have been six and seven. And I put them together and you just want to stick them so that you've got a nice even border with the both of them. So like that. Okay, so can you see I've got a nice even border there. Die cut them four times if you want to do inside as well, which I did. And you'll then have these. You'll get these rings. And that's now what I'm going to stick around each of these. And I think it's this and then these strips here, which really kind of just add that little detail and that finishing touch. So four of them and then these are the width of the bag, so nine inches. The cream one is half an inch and then the brown one is a quarter of an inch, both nine inches long. And just do two of those. Okay, so I'm now going to go and get all of this stuck down. I did die cut them all in brown first and then thought, actually, no, I want them in cream. So I've just put brown behind. So mine are two layers there, but you don't have to do that. Okay, and then with the my Merry Christmas and one of these, if you just sit it on there, you've got an instant tag for the front. So I'm just going to pop a couple of sticky pads on the back. There we go. So then I've got the box. So you'll see how lovely does that look, all matching. And then that will sit inside. I've got tissue paper to go over the top, but I've still got the gift cards to come for those. So there's a cinema gift voucher going in those with all the chocolates. I thought that worked quite well together. So I'm, yeah, I love that. And what a beautiful presented gift. I think it's so nice. Okay, so I've got some twine here. I've got the gift tag already done. And I've got these little shaker. They were around little gift tags. They had like to and from on them, but I took them off. I got them from B&M. But I'm just gonna cut some of this and thread it through here. I already stuck some berries on this. It's the last two berries that I've got. So it will have tissue in it. You want to make sure that you've stuck that trim down because it will pop out otherwise as this kind of curves around. And then I'm just going to thread that through the top of that one. Tie that on there like a loose knot and then I thread the star on and then just trim off the ends and there you have it really lovely 
very strong gift bag. You'd be surprised what you can now fit in that because that base is really strong. And if you want to reinforce it with a thicker grey board, then you can do. So um, yeah, I really am pleased with these, and uh, I love that. You know, it's all homemade, yet they look really, really special. They look like little houses as well. You could certainly maybe use this concept and create like a house on the front, a bit like I've done my Christmas cottage. You could possibly do, you know, something like that. Let me just, can't get it all in, but there you go. You can see what I've done. So hope you've enjoyed this gift bag tutorial. It's a different size. It will go into the playlist where I title all of the bags by size. So if you've brought a present and now you're trying to look for a, a gift bag to suit it, just go through that playlist and you'll be able to see all the measurements. So I will list this one as the nine by six and a half by five, I guess it is. So yeah. Hope you like it. Please give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy today and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.